Amidst the coronavirus pandemic in the country, Nigeria's ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, has released a timetable for its primaries ahead of the 2020 governorship election in Edo State. This is coming barely seven days after Nigeria's electoral body, INEC, expressed its readiness to conduct elections in the state despite the uncertainty over the impact of the pandemic. INEC had in February fixed the governorship election in Edo for September 19. In a statement signed by the APC's National Organizing Secretary, Mane Bediro, the party said the primaries will commence with the sale of forms to Edo governorship aspirants from May 20 to June 2. The forms for governorship aspirants have been fixed at 22.5 million naira. This includes 2.5 million naira for expression of interest and 20 million naira for the nomination form. The APC said its Edo governorship primary will hold on June 22. The party did not indicate what type of primaries it will hold. In the past, the APC has held different forms of primaries, direct, indirect, and consensus to pick its candidates. Currently, Edo State is governed by the APC, which also has a majority of the state's lawmakers. The governing APC is, however, in a dilemma over which mode of primaries to adopt for the forthcoming governorship polls in Edo State. Our findings at Clearview indicated that party stalwarts had yet to agree on the issue. The Edo State chairman of the APC, Ansa Mojezwa, has said that based on a decision of the party's National Executive Committee, state chapters were at liberty to choose what mode best suited their peculiarities before forwarding same to the National Working Committee. However, a faction of the party led by Colonel David Imuse disagrees, saying the state has nothing to do with the governorship primaries. It was learned that those routing for a candidate who enjoys the support of the APC National Chairman Adam Soshomole in Edo State are pushing for direct primaries, while those sympathetic to the governor prefer indirect primaries, a mode in which delegates decide. Authoritatively, Clearview TV can tell you that the camps of Governor Godwin Obaseki and the National Chairman of the All Progressives Congress, APC, Comrade Adam Soshomole, in Edo State are both expressing optimism that they will clinch the ticket of the party for the forthcoming 2020 governorship election. Loyalists and foot soldiers of both factions told Clearview that though the focus now is to collectively work towards halting the spread of coronavirus in the state, they will work to secure the ticket whenever the primary is held. The Edo APC has been engulfed in a crisis of supremacy between Oshomole and Obaseki, who succeeded the former as the governor of the state. The development gave birth to the Edo People's Movement, EPM, and the eventual division of the party into two factions. Aslem Ojezwa, who was the chairman before the crack, leads Obaseki's faction as his chairman, while the Oshomole's faction has Colonel David Musa retired as his chairman. While the Obaseki group is leaving no stone unturned, in ensuring that the incumbent governor gets the ticket, Oshomole's faction is also bent on stopping him from getting a second term. In all of this, it will interest you to know that some leaders of the All Progressives Congress in Edo State have called on President Muhammadu Buhari to ensure a free and fair primary of the party ahead of the governorship election scheduled for September. Expressing their concerns in a letter to President Buhari, the leaders said the people of the state were tired of the crisis in the state chapter of the party and therefore wanted a change. The leaders are Stanley Dodidi, a former chairman of Esako East Local Government Council, Sam Obo, a former chairman of Esa Northeast Local Government Council, and Etino Sagwewe, a former member of Edo State House of Assembly. 
The group's letter to Buhari followed a recent letter by another faction of the party in Edo, allegedly aimed at smearing the personality of Ize Yamu, who is a governorship aspirant on the platform of the APC. The letter written to Buhari says that Pastor Osage Ize Yamu, who is the primary target of the said letter of lies, is not as falsely claimed by the faceless authors of the letter, a three-month-old member of APC. It reveals that on the contrary, Pastor Osage Ize Yamu, more than being part and parcel from the very beginning, was in the inner circle of the great personalities, instrumental in the formation of the party. The leaders are saying that in the unlikely event that APC makes a similar mistake by fielding Godwin Obaseki in the forthcoming governorship election, the party shall suffer similar judicial misfortune as happened in Bayelsa because Godwin Obaseki's educational credentials are riddled with manifest and incurable inconsistencies. The leadership of the APC has tried to broker peace among all warring factions of the party in the state without a breakthrough. A move, observers say, could greatly hamper their success at the polls in September. And in the spirit of reconciliation, a former national chairmanship aspirant of the All Progressives Congress, APC Chief Ibrahim Onkwai, has urged Edo State Governor Godwin Obaseki to issue a proclamation on the Edo State House of Assembly and allow the alienated 14 members of the Assembly to be sworn in to carry out their legislative duties. Speaking in a chat with newsman Emokpayo said, the APC crisis in Edo State will continue to fester as long as only a section of the Assembly continues to legislate on the affairs of the state. The APC chieftain regretted that for almost a year now, the oversight functions in the state has been lacking because the State Assembly was not properly inaugurated as only 10 out of the 24 assembly members run the affairs of the state legislature. That is saying that 14 state constituencies have not been represented in Edo State House of Assembly for almost a year now. Now before we go, it is pertinent to state here that Clearview TV is equally paying due attention to the contributions of women to the development of Edo State in all spheres. We gather that female senior special assistants and special assistants recently appointed by Governor Godwin of Baseki of Edo State have been advised to see their appointments as a call to service. Wife of the state governor, Mrs. Betsy of Baseki, gave the advice in Benin during a two-day retreat she organized for the female political appointees. Recall that over 400 women from across the three senatorial districts of the state were recently appointed by Governor Obaseki into various offices and parastatals. Mrs. Obaseki said the training became necessary to expose the new female political appointees on their roles and expectations in advancing development in the Governor Obaseki-led administration. The Edo First Lady asked the women to acquire the necessary skills and knowledge that will enable them to be outstanding in the discharge of their duties, noting that men will not give women positions just because they are women, but because they merit it. There is need to inculcate proper work culture that will make you productive in the discharge of your duties." Unquote. Also speaking at the event, wife of the Deputy Governor of the State, Mrs. Miriam Shaibu, urged the newly appointed SAs and SSAs to be supportive of one another and work as a team. Mrs. Shaibu, who noted that women had continued to play active roles in the development of the state, urged the female appointees to contribute their quota at the grassroots level. To ensure that the government's social distance directive was observed at the retreat, a total of 200 women were trained simultaneously in 10 large halls via the internet. That will be all on this meeting edition of Edo 2020, a daily package on countdown to the September governorship election. But before we go, let's inform you that Edo 2020 daily package is one of the materials we shall be bringing to you at 7 p.m. on our YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook pages. And changing with the times, Clearview TV will be feeding you now with uploads of latest happenings nationally 
and internationally. Our phone contact remains 0818-960-0000. You're welcome.